Amazon have just released this, the brand new voice remote, the voice remote pro, but is it really any different? And should you spend the money to buy one? Well, it does have some awesome features over the standard remote, but I'm actually really pissed off at Amazon for this one because I feel somewhat misled by the marketing. You take a look at all of the marketing pictures on the website and it goes on and on about two customizable buttons and in each of the photos bar one, it shows the four buttons at the bottom as blank. I thought, great, because the previous remote had predefined apps with their logos printed on, which was okay, except for the Amazon Music button, which is a waste of space because they only have 14 people on the planet subscribed to Amazon Music. Well, guess what I found when I opened the new Pro Remote? It had four apps printed onto the buttons that appeared blank in the promotional material, but guess what one of those buttons was? Amazon bloody music. So I went back into the product listing and lo and behold, buried amongst the text is a quick disclaimer in brackets, apps may vary. Now I still don't think this is explicitly clear, so it's kind of annoyed me. But what started on a sour note, actually, I like the new features it has. For starters, this thing is backlit and it activates automatically when you move the controller. So it's very, very handy for seeing in dark environments and overall makes it look a lot more premium. It's actually really nice having the backlight on the controller and it's not something you see particularly often when it comes to TVs and streaming devices. It also feels more premium because it's got a slightly different material composition and it's a smidgen heavier than the regular remote. It's also a tad bigger too. Now this added weight and size is due to the new backlight in part, but it also has a fantastic new method to find your remote. Simply ask any of your Echo devices where it is and watch what happens. Where's my remote? This is such a simple addition that might seem trivial, but the amount of time my remote goes walkabouts is unbelievable. This is going to save me so much time and hassle. I cannot wait to have this feature built into everything that I own. Where are my slippers? Where's my sanity? You never had that stew. Now, the buttons are slightly changed. There's a lot more on this remote compared to the standard. You've got an extra quick button that goes to the settings and another button to take you to your app library, which replaces the Disney Plus button on the standard remote. Interestingly, there's a headphone out button that allows you to quick change the audio output, which is actually quite handy for some people. But lastly, near the bottom are the two new buttons that are customizable to launch any app you've installed and a few other things. Overall, the new buttons are a great addition for navigation and quick access to areas of the interface like settings that used to be a bit of a faff to get to. And being able to customize the two buttons is very, very handy, but I'm a little bit disappointed here. They haven't built in any form of smart home control through these customizable buttons. It's a massive missed opportunity here to allow routines to be triggered through these, which is a bit of a theme with Amazon. Lots of missed opportunities. And just lack of thought. I mean, how good would it have been to simply press one of the customizable buttons and have it dim the lights, lower a screen, turn on a projector and pop up Netflix on it? Oh well. Look, I think this new remote is cool. It's certainly got some nifty features that are actually really useful, but will these features impact its battery longevity? Because it runs two AAA batteries, which is the same as the regular controller, but with the new finding capabilities, internal speakers and backlight that's activated by what I would assume is some kind of accelerometer, how long will the batteries last? Will I be changing them out every single month? Because that will get annoying. 
I guess only time will tell with this one, and I'll pop down in the comments and pin how long it took before these ran out. But it would have been ace if they'd built in some form of wireless charging, so I could use the pads I've got in nearly every single room in the house to recharge it. In fact, I don't know why we don't see that technology more often in media controllers from any manufacturer. Hmm. Now, my biggest concern is that with all of these new features and all of the missed opportunities, is it worth the £35 asking price? Well, it currently doesn't come included in any of their existing devices, and it's not exactly an expensive piece of tech by any stretch. So I guess if you've lost your remote and you need a new one, it's probably a no-brainer. But... If you're thinking about upgrading from one you've got already, you probably want to think twice because it likely isn't worth it. Unless you're like me and can't remember what day it is, let alone remember which special safe place you've put your remote because you'll probably find that the finding function is invaluable. And if you are like me, or you just want to check it out for yourselves, then I'll drop a link at the description below for you. But do let me know in the comments what you guys think about this new remote. Is it the best thing since sliced bread, or will it go the way of the Sinclair C5? So do, do pop your thoughts below and let me know. And if my opinion has helped you decide whether or not to buy this new remote, then do return the favour and hit that thumbs up and subscribe button if you want, already a subscriber and i'll see you back for another episode of studio reviews soon